Hey there, we're going to be covering uh, a new piece here today on uh, compression. So this is part four of our uh, boot camp series. We'll be talking about compression tech and couplers. So the simplest way I can put this is that if you aren't aware of compression tech, you are missing out on a lot. Compression tech and coupler usage vastly increase the threshold at which you can manufacture effective technology in this game. Uh, I'm just going to start a quick base here while talking about kind of the synapses of it. Using compression tech and invisible items, you can actually make higher quality mechanics in less space, and I'll show you an example of that in a moment. Um, and, uh, just a moment, I have to kind of get some, uh, drawing mouse settled. But yeah, um, yeah, so, uh, you can actually push your technology further in less space. And using couplers, you can actually make your workspace cleaner. You can also increase your threshold very similarly to compression pistons. Um, and all in all, there's a lot of really good stuff you can do. And I, I think it's very easy to look past all that uh, at day's end. But once you really get into compression tech, I think you'll really see the benefits. So trust me on that one. Bear with me for a moment. So now we have a heavy base. In fact, we're going to recover this base to 122. There we go, that's no longer eyesore. So, yeah, covering the idea. Um, let's talk about merge pistons. So there's two kinds of merge piston we can demonstrate. Piston, piston, useless piston that does 100 something or other. Now we have a sort of block on the other end so we can measure this. And uh, let's see, and we're going to do a merge piston. So how to do a merge piston, if you aren't aware, is you paint it invisible to reduce physics issues which is zero, zero, zero black. That's how you make anything invisible. Anything that is invisible, except for your core and sleds of all things, uh, will not have any form of collision. So that's just something to keep in mind if you want to just kind of add some connection uh, behind the scenes to your parts. And we can set this to two, and actually we're gonna set this to, yeah, let's go ahead and do 200. I, I have an idea here. And you're gonna uh, put the event twice in this case. This will close two block space due to 200. And uh, I'm going to do a single merge event, um, a single merge group application, which is also black like the invisible nature you want. So that's a good trick to remember. And now we're going to put three colored blocks on top of this, and we're going to paint them, I think, green, yellow, red. Yeah, so there we go. And I left transparency on like a doofus, but uh, whatever. So now we have uh, compressing these old blocks here which might actually cause some fun stuff. Because these are merge group, by the way, these actually do not count as new bodies and they cannot move. They will set themselves to the desired length or subtraction of space, and then they will do nothing else. Um, so that's actually a really good thing to remember. And you set to just a single event with merge group, uh, this will actually extend the piston. And we can demonstrate that in a moment here. Um, theoretically, that should extend two blocks, raising this red to be where this red is by default. But in game, we'll see if they actually swap places. So we want to remember this is on the left. Um, let's see. Oh yes, yes. And we also have merge hinges and rotators. If you aren't aware, these are kind of weird, but they only work with A-type hinges and rotators. Simplest way to put it. And we're gonna make these invisible for same reasons listed before, just to kind of reduce physics bugginess. And you can also do merge with certain set angles as well. Just like with pistons, you can do both. In fact, we're gonna do both just for a uh, kind of showmanship here. We're going to do 30, and we're going to do, okay, apparently 30, 30, and, uh, actually, maybe I'm doing this wrong, maybe there is, yeah, I don't think you can compress, I'm going to, let's see if I'm just full of crap in the moment here, and, uh, we're going to cover the, these first ones blue, and the second one sort of, uh, cyan, there we go, so, yeah, now we've got these guys covered, we're going to do a neutral event, 60 times 2, these are merge group, good, copy, paste, remove, and, uh, yeah, let's see, and I think that really covers the most, so we're going to go and, um, whoops, I've got to add a core to this, silly me, so yeah, demonstrating this briefly, um, we're going to have some interesting stuff going on, we have indeed compressed this, uh, down to the yellow, actually, because it, uh, compresses the piston block, uh, using the first 100 units, and then compress the green block into the body. We have this thing extended as a piston, obviously. And we only have one piston shown, as you can see, as they merged all the redundant pistons to close spaces automatically. 
That's a weird trick I didn't read um, until I uh, was uh, modifying the gravity Rex. We're also knowing that two blocks above that we have the uh, extending merge piston, which we can't demonstrate, but it's quite stable. And then we actually have perfectly identical faction using double event versus single event. So good to demonstrate that here while I was uh, foo barring all the information, so we can be very concise about what can or cannot be done. So talking about like what's the applications of compression tech? Obviously, you can fit more things in the more space. You know, let's let's demonstrate that briefly. We can mount um, let's just mount three cannons, and we can use this. And uh, we're gonna slap one barrel on that with a line cannon 50, and that's gonna look like that. Now the cool thing is uh, using a two block compression piston which is usually the most common piston you're going to use for almost all applications. Um, we actually have this sort of setup going right here. And now we can actually compress twice as much gun in the exact amount of space. And as long as there isn't any moving parts per each segment of these guns, which, I mean, for the life of me, I can't possibly imagine, but just so you know, uh, this will actually stop these uh, from having any physics bugs relating to compressing them into each other. If you do have physics bugs, it's probably related to moving parts on things like that. So, just a word of advice if you have to do some problem solving one day. So, yeah, that's a good way to compress more weapon in less space. Obviously, you will have a heavier weapon still from twice the mass, but that's not really the worst thing to ever happen. Now, we're talking about actual clarity of function and not just quantity of weaponry. Um, when I state that cannon trick works even better with swords. Swords compress them down each other. You get 8 or 16 strength swords, you don't even need amps, you can just plow through things uncontested. But uh, let's see, we did a micro cam piece here earlier today, and uh, here we have it. So this is a good example of what compression tech can do for you. Now as you can see, we have two cameras which aren't visible, but still work. We have two couplers, and we have some anchoring force that's irrelevant. And then we have rotating up and down for this little mini turret. We have rotating left to right in this little mini turret. This is basically just a sideways configuration of what you would do for most turrets. Um, and it doesn't matter how you mount your turret so long as you do for the most part, and as long as it doesn't collide, you know, we space this out for clarity's sake. And we also limit our range of motion to plus and minus 30 degrees to not have the gun implode the body. But, um, put simply, uh, you know, uh, turrets are really reliable. As long as you have both the moving axes, they aim where they're gonna aim, unless they're losing the gravity or weight or some other odd external force. And, uh, now, uh, we have two cameras. We have a center camera for viewing center, and we have a camera that is mounted by coupler offset. This is what I call a floated optic. By using this to shove two blocks to the right, we're actually right above the gun here. And uh, we can just kind of build these in a separate area. We can even use B and shove these around and not have to care. Uh, and just be able to move these around for more workspace clarity in case that first workspace clarity wasn't enough. That's phenomenal, I find. Now, uh, moving on, uh, we have, like I said, the sideways camera. You can compress them in this fashion to have a perfectly stable optic. It used to be an almost perfectly stable optic, but uh, either my science changed or the game science changed. One of the two, and I will demonstrate this briefly. If you mount a scope on a gun, you're going to have a major, major, major issue where you are going to have... Uh, your gun drop down or veer to a side or any other and other problems from mounting a scope on a gun. It's the offset from the center uh, from both the camera and the tracker center that will actually cause drift. So the way we've compressed these cameras is they are completely inside of one block space. Camera, tracker, rotators, hinges, everything. You can just look wherever you want and that is where things will aim. So you can tell we're having a range of motion issues, so it's kind of flubbering, but uh, we could have added more range of motion onto that way. And uh, this gun is particularly accurate. I can see him shoot this block all day. Like, if we zoom all the way in, you can tell we're not even drifting like a millimeter. This is perfectly stable. There is nothing wrong with this optic. Actually, I think we are invisibly slowly by like two pixels a second, which is, you know, like a, a thousandth. 1,080th of my screen right now, drifting upwards at maximum zoom. If that is an absolute heresy, I don't know what is. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty bizarre, and we can actually just get a nice inline gun, uh, just aiming. Having the uh, optic be parallel with the gun increases accuracy, and uh, aiming is incredibly so. You know, before we were looking at the center of the gun, we were shooting the center of the gun. Now we're looking at the uh, center of the gun, we're shooting the left of the gun, because the gun is mounted leftwards. 
So you can tell the difference right there. So while we're here, I'm going to show you my Krabby Patty secret formula. Uh, I actually have two of these. One of them is related to walking robots. One of them is related to compressing cameras. This camera compression tech and the uh, highly stable tech itself is actually like ages, ages, ages old. I think the time when I built my first boat, I had this technology mastered, or pretty much damn near. So imagining our coupler is going to mount one block high, and we're not offsetting the Y on either. Uh, we're going to compress two blocks with these first pistons. We're going to do piston, rotator, piston, tracker for rotator, piston, hinge, piston, tracker for hinge, piston, camera. And these are all just 200 pistons for maximum clarity. I was doing an experiment with less compression pistons last time that actually caused more optical drift for reference. But you could actually do 300 pistons um, and compress, like, say, both the camera and the tracker at the same time to reduce uh, space further on the gun. But I would not do it on the camera because you lose stability and accuracy. And quite frankly, having an accurate optic and an easy-to-use mech is the single greatest favor you can do for yourself as a player. The ability to, without question, Aim and operate your mech to the maximum of ability at long range, short range, whatever combat. You can give it everything you've got at very high operating thresholds. And that will put you at a serious advantage over your competition. And that's uh, kind of one of the many things I want to get into in this series. and Kind of talk about how to level the playing field between new players and old players. Um, and a lot of the engineering involved. So anyways, imagining what we're doing with our pistons is imagine compressing two blocks down. I'm just kind of doing this with my finger in real life, kind of in, uh, kind of count blocks. But one block down, the rotator's above the coupler. Two blocks down, it's inside the coupler. And the coupler is just on top of this. And then we do uh, the same thing with uh, two blocks down. First one, coupler uh, above rotator, and then coupler into, or a uh, tracker into uh, the rotator after that, and above it, yada, yada, yada. And we do the same thing with the hinge, inside. And we do the same with the tracker, inside. And we do the same thing with the scope, inside. So by the time it's all done, as I can demonstrate very briefly here, the love of God, always make this invisible for many, many, many reasons. You compromise the clarity of the robotic camera when you don't make it invisible. But as you can tell right here, this is an orgy of camera on rotator, on hinge, on tracker violence. It's just an absolute bottle of mayhem. But that is the entire aiming apparatus, intangible to gunfire. Perfectly stable, or damn near in its operation, and uh, lined up very beautifully, just one block space above the thing. So, with that, you can really just make it, uh, optic systems easy. You can put them above guns for precise aim, and put them on the torso for kind of dual wield favoring aim, if you like uh, having a gun on each arm and just raining a lead down, uh, raining lead down range with both. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the essence of what I would mostly do with compression. And you can do some other stuff. Um, let's go and demonstrate this briefly. I have a robot, my Hellfire, I've already demonstrated a couple times, actually uses this technology in an odd way. Uh, you can use this artistically as well, I want to take a moment and say. So I'm going to have the Hellfire and its absolute maze of uh, mechanics. We are actually using compression pistons sometimes put things at very particular offsets. We're sometimes using them to actually shove moving parts into pieces of the body. You know, normally you couldn't mount two couplers inside. Uh, actually, I guess you could mount them inside these blocks, but it'd be pretty weird. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we use compression business to compress these in a block each. And kind of shove them back where they should be inside these little slots. Uh, we use, I believe, partial compression pistons or partial coupler spacing to actually kind of uh, keep the torso from touching the lower torso, which stops it from sticking up, by the way. Then the same thing with the shoulders, if you'll notice. In fact, these are dummy right here. Um, and a handful of other things, but it, in essence, um, you can see I've used lots of compression, cameras, uh, no doubt on weaponry. I've done it on uh, armor plating for some degrees. Uh, lots of little intricate things. And couplers have made the workspace a disaster, but a manageable disaster. Because if I had to have all this mounted on the machine, I'd be using even more compression tech and pure piston form. Couplers really are a beautiful invention. I think I'll cover while we're here uh, how I use couplers as I uh, take my time and I uh, find what I want to color. I'll be like, oh, this is the camera. This is the first thing I want to make. So I'm going to color this 25 red, and then I'll do 50 red, 75, until I'm at 250 or 255. And then I'll go over to 25 green, 50 green, and I'll go green, blue, red and green to make yellow, uh, 
green and blue to make cyan. Or actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then probably red and blue to make uh, magenta. So that's just kind of a cycle. And if you do it right, you get, I believe, about 10 couplers per every single color. So that is a 60 coupler game plan. And whenever I do physics, I make sure to set this aside. I do a black box, as I call it. I do about 25 plus 1 red and plus 2 blue. So they have like this purple hue on these couplers. And these are used purely for core physics. In this case, we're talking sled tech, um, uh, gravity compensation. Uh, more sled tech related to this being part turret, don't mind that. Uh, an AG graph for stability and thrusters for movement. So at day's end, we have this massive maze that all assembles into this beautiful, lean, mean machine. And uh, if this isn't an example of an absolute mess of clutter made manageable purely by compression tech and made competitive by compression tech, I don't know what is. So uh, I think that covers about everything we have here for today. So I'll see you guys next time. But for now, WCCC signing out.